up? <laughs> Hi. Welcome to the live video pods. Yeah, it's a little uncomfortable for me. I'm, Why is it uncomfortable? I've never had a camera on me. You're looking great. You think so? You think socks and burks? Yeah, I mean, the Yeti shirt. It's great, dude. I mean, you kind of like, all of a sudden, you just went from, you, you, you look like you've, really done something hold on you can't say that because since there's never been a video before you can just pretend i've looked like anything before this it didn't look like this it's very different it's a whole new world it's a brave new world it's a new it's a fantastic and new point of view who no we've done it before we can't do it again who's on the pod this week where you are on the pod this week i mean excitingly pete finch texas pete texas pete does not make an appearance on the pod did you remember what his team said what they say? It was the very end of the podcast. We were, you know, spoiler alert. We Eric was like, "Whoa, did we miss anything? Should we do Texas Pete?" And he said, "Oh, my team told me not to do that." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't know. It's it was funny to me. Like, I mean, some things, a lot of things that I find funny are are like not. Well, I think it was just that he said that I guess. he always ends up doing accents. It was more so. I love the idea because his team really nice people. Um, but maybe even younger than me. Yeah. So I just love the idea of like 19 year olds being like, Pete, please don't do it, mate. Not, not the Texas Pete. Don't do it. Um, yeah, very excited to get into Peter Finch today. Uh, before we get started, I want to really present the Eric Anders Lang show. Thanks to our friends at precision pro. Uh, they just came out with the new NX 10, which is not only effective and beautiful, it's affordable. Uh, precisionprogolf.com. If you use the promo code Eric, you're going to get 20% off. That's not true. You're going to get $20 off your purchase. <laughs> yeah, it's not that affordable. It's not better than 20%. Uh, 20, 20% would have been amazing. Um, but just to be clear, you're going to get $20 off. Um, and uh, I like Precision Pro Golf, and I've hung out with them, and they've really supported us throughout all of our ups and our downs. And our downs. How long? <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> How long have you used a um, Precision Pro rangefinder? Um, well, I mean, it's been a minute. Like they used to, their colors originally were green and gray, and then we made a, a red and gray rangefinder that was the RGC rangefinder, which you may be the holding in your have, hands yeah. right now. It's a good one. Um, today's episode, we got Peter Finch, as we said. Um, you know, we haven't spoken since Dubai, where we were both in kind of the bubble. We were in quarantine in the in the in the uh, in the bubble there with all the European tour players, and I mean, it was like a three-hour podcast that I was just dying through. You listened to the whole thing. I was the that was the first podcast I ever really edited, and I was like, oh, I'm in for a treat. Are these all going to be like this? These are awesome. Unique. Yeah, he's very funny. Uh, that one, yeah, it was about three hours. We got it down to about an hour and forty-five minutes. Oh, did you? Yeah, which was which was still a very long. Oh, podcast. I didn't even know that you cut things out. Well, the podcast, <laughs> the podcast do get edited. It might not seem that way. Right. Uh, if you're listening, I think one of the you know I didn't really know I didn't really know about Finchie's requ- uh, quest for the open. He talks about that quite a bit, obviously because mm-hmm. we're sitting in the shadow of the open. Yeah, this is recorded again in the Sounder Clubhouse. Shout out to them. Uh, and yeah, he uh, he has this great YouTube series. If you don't know who Pete Finch is, he's a UK based YouTuber, vlogger, instructor. I do a bad job of introducing people. I appreciate you. Do you think do you think so? I don't think so. I think it's good that you say because I just assume every I've known oh, him for I so long. Saying, I'm like yeah. Peter Finch. Like, come on. Our, Peter our friend is. Peter. Well, here's the thing. I think one of your greatest skill sets as an interviewer is you immediately put the guest in a state of ease. And I think the downside of that is it requires not doing a formal introduction, mm. which is why we do these. Oh, I see. A formal introduction makes them feel form uh, formal. What are the chances? <laughs> Who would have thought? Look at us. I do. I have a, it's a trick I learned um, somewhere around walking around the street, um, but it's verbal ketamine. Verbal ketamine? Yeah. That, what, like, what is the trick? Just. Um, I don't know. I can't tell you. Oh, it's just like it's you illegal. need to. That would be against the law. Yeah. But it's a verbal way of inducing a sort of a cat-like coma. Do you think, <laughs> do you think you would have been a good lawyer? Actually, yeah. What like what kind of law? Do you Why do you bring about? that up? Because I'm just thinking about like how long you've been an interviewer, and the goal of an interview is to get people to tell you things they don't tell other people. Interesting. And I feel like if you were a litigator, is that a lawyer's job? I kind of I guess so. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah, my line of questioning. 
cross-examining. It'd be amazing. What if we were in a podcast interview and someone was like, um, objection. <laughs> Sustained. I'm like, overruled. The witness, uh, the witness has to answer the question. <laughs> you may approach the mic. One of my favorite ads was the Zurich lie detector golf ad. You oh, know, yeah. They're uh-huh. like, are you a golf addict? But ladies and gentlemen, um, this week and every week, uh, you can bet on the PGA Tour using FanDuel Sportsbook. Uh, I was looking around my Sportsbook app, and they have odds on the President's Cup. JoJo and I were going over the President's Cup odds. We're big pro golf people. We, we just love it. I mean, here's the thing. like, It's not hard to be like enamored with the best players in the world. And it looks like those would be made up of the international team. Currently, uh, the standings for the Quail Hollow President's Cup this year is... I'll start from the back. Yeah. The front and the back are very similar. As it be, Adam Scott in the back, ninth, Corey Connors, Mito Pereira, Abraham Anser, mm, just some gents. Louis Oosthuizen, Joaquin Neiman, Sung J M, Hideki Matsuyama, and of course, our friend Cam Smith. So this is where they stand currently for the internationals and the odds. When we were looking at this in the app, um, plus three eighty on the inter- on the internationals, I think is pretty good money. Here's yeah. the thing. Yeah, I'm going to do what everybody does in a podcast and say something without knowing if it's true or not. Do you know if Cam Smith, if he signs this live deal, does he get to play in the President's Cup? Uh, I don't know, actually. Because um, I feel like that would change. Probably not, because yeah. I think the President's Cup is a PGA Tour function. Mm-hmm. I know that the Ryder Cup, obviously. Well, the Ryder Cup is PGA, and they yeah. did pass. They made a rule that said live guys can't play in the Ryder Cup. Mm-hmm. Dang. Wild. Dude, the whole thing is like, um, you ever see that um, children's book about um, where well, the sky is falling? The, like, which one? The Stuart Little? Chicken Little. Stuart. Stuart Little? I think it's Stuart Little, yeah. Stuart Little's the mouse. Yeah. Chicken Little is the one that has the oh, sky is falling. It's Chicken Little. Okay, I think you're right. It's And the acorn hits him on the head, but he thinks the sky is falling? Yeah. But in this case, the sky is actually falling, or do you think we got an acorn situation? Well, it depends on who you ask, I guess. <laughs> I mean... I don't know what's going on, but it does seem like there's a lot of new rules happening very fast. And it's, and it, you know, I mean, like, it's funny because, like, I love a lot of these players. You know, I, you know, Henrik Stenson, like, I've always really enjoyed him. And, you know, I don't know what it's like to be a pro golfer. Anyway, we're not going to talk about the live too much. Uh, we're talking mostly yeah. about no sweat first bets and using the code RGC. Uh, when you download FanDuel Sportsbook, in order to get $1,000 back in free bets. You get great promotions every day on FanDuel Sportsbook. Safe and secure app. It means no one's going to mug you while you're using it. <laughs> I don't know if that's what that means. I guarantee that. Uh, you're going to get paid fast, and uh, you can see why FanDuel is America's number one sportsbook. Using the promo code RGC, you're going to get a no-sweat first bet of up to $1,000 cash back. And they that's not true. One thousand dollars in no in betting. Yeah, like the opportunity to make more money. You can bet that money. You can't just take that money out. I looked into it. He um, tried to do it. He yeah, was I he did. was sitting there tapping his phone, like withdraw, withdraw. And before we get on to Pete Finch, lastly, FanDuel Sportsbook is the official betting operator of the PGA Tour. Promo code RGC. Please sign up and help help us. <laughs> help us to help you. Um, yeah, help. Uh, I mean, hey, without further ado, welcome to welcome to Finchie's world. Are we rolling? It's very formal. Like that. It's a little formal. It's good. It's cool. Pete, how long is this podcast going to be? Um, how long's a piece of string? Is that the saying? How know. long's a piece of string? <laughs> we do we do chat for a bit, don't we? God knows where we're going to end up. At what point does a piece of string become rope? Uh, it's more of a thickness thing. That's not about length. Length. Yeah. Got yeah. it. It's more girth. So like that's like how many mics? How many mics? I don't know. Welcome to the show. Thanks. Welcome to the show. Uh, we're we're at the Open. We are. Is this your favorite tournament of the year, would you say? Yeah. It, it, it always feels like the whole year builds up to this point. Right. And then golfing-wise, and then afterwards, it's almost like, what do we what do we do for the rest of the year? You experience depression after this? Is that what you're saying? Uh, post-Open depression, yeah. Yeah, a P-O-D. Bit. Yeah, P-O-D. It's a real medical thing. That could be a thing. I think I mean, actually at the local pharmacist they do. What do they prescribe for that? For that? Uh, it's probably a placebo. 
Um, you know, just get sugar the, pill. Yeah, just get the desperate people coming in. Right, I mean, sugar tends to help everything anyway, doesn't it? Right, but I don't know. It's just, it's just cool, isn't it? It, yeah. it is. It's just a cool event. It's cool vibe, and I think with it being here as well, like the whole atmosphere. Here meaning just, yeah, St. Andrews, Andrews yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's just... Just because, like, I don't know, people, cause some people can see us, but not everyone can see us. That's true. Um, well, if you're listening. If you're listening. Wrap your ears around this. We are overlooking the Irish Sea. Uh, what? What? That's the Irish Sea? It's the Irish Sea. It's North not sea. the Irish. The North Sea. No, it's not the Irish Sea. We're on the, we're on the East Coast, aren't we? We yeah. couldn't be further from Ireland. I was on the West Coast last week. So yeah, that is the North Sea. That's the North Sea. That's is. Would it be technically the East Sea though? Here, can I get a? Can I get a? It's the North Sea. Can we contact the? It's geog- not the, the Irish Geographers Guild. It's not I the just Irish. Kind of want to know where Irish I mean, Sea if came. If you want to think about it, technically all the seas are connected anyway. So <laughs> That's also not true. Well, water. The Caspian Sea is is disconnected. It's yeah, the but North it wants Sea. Wants to go there. It's the North Sea. It's the North Sea. It's yeah. not the like Irish. Like I said, sea. the North Sea. Caspian Sea. Now, now all everything you say is going into question. Is this even Peter Finch? I mean, I question everything I say all the time. Okay, so let's just paint. You were painting a picture. Go ahead, yeah. keep painting. Um, where in the painting had I gone to? Say you were Andrews. you were basically lying to people that you were you were oh, painting yeah, a picture yeah. of I was, Ireland. I, yeah, I, think. I, was, I was completely <laughs> completely lying to people where we were. Yeah, we're overlooking the North Sea uh, today, looking a little bit grey. Yeah, perfect weather for fishing, though. I thought you were going to say um, for golf. <laughs> you really had me. And then, yeah, it's a little bit grey. I think the weather for this week is okay. Maybe a little bit of rain tomorrow, but the course is just so baked out. It's In a good way. In a good way, yeah. yeah. But it needs a little bit of wind or they're just going to tear it apart. Yeah. Unfortunately. Like, a, like what kind of animal would they be tearing it apart? Um, it would be, if the wind doesn't blow... It's like a bear that's just come across a rabbit. Just like, rah, rah, rah. yeah, just, just like, like two seconds. Yeah, like not even, like might even not even tear it, just like eat it whole, <laughs> swallow it. No chewing involved. Have you seen uh, like a large bird swallow a fish? Uh, I've it's, seen a, I've seen a pelican swallow a pigeon before. Whoa. Yeah. That sounds gross. That's it, not supposed to happen. No, it wasn't. It was a bit grim to be <laughs> Bird on bird. <laughs> yeah. Bit of cannibalism there. That's kind of gross. Yeah, it I feel great. like a bird, like whole, way different than a fish. Um, I would have fish thought. is slippery. Yeah, a bird's like trying to get out. Oh yeah, I mean it was putting up a fight as well. All like, the claws in the tummy. There were wings everywhere. Yeah, that sounds. Um, grim. So yeah, I mean if you are a pel- pelican listening, stick to fish. That'd be <laughs> that'd be my recommendation. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how yeah. who's listening to this. So yeah, I don't know if they do know. podcasts or videos. I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm not sure what the Pelican demo is. I'd imagine it's more video based. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, I, I, could I be. don't really know if they've got ears. I'm maybe never... maybe the <laughs> can a Pelican listen? Uh, it's one of the great questions of our time. Yeah, mm. I'm sure we could find out. I mean, do all Pelicans need, have ears. All we need to do is just train one with a name and see if it turns around eventually. Yeah. Well, oh, parrots. Parrots are similar to Pelicans. Parrots can definitely hear. This is true. Yeah. And they don't have any visible ears, do they? That's a good point. Yeah. I mean, as a bird's ears, well, bats have ears because Batman has ears. Yeah, but bats are very, very visible ears. Bats are also not birds. What uh, are they? Aren't they marsupials? They are scary. I know that. <laughs> I had a bat flying to my head once. <laughs> like, where? Uh, on the Isle of Arran on the West Coast. Oh, it's a beautiful island. Oh, it's absolutely Were fun. you playing Shiskin or where were you? Oh, yeah, playing them all, yeah. But yeah. I was out one night just looking at the stars. Oh, okay. hammered. And then it just flew into the side roasting. of my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think you just fell over. No, and this is the thing. No one believed me because like bats are able to avoid things, <laughs> but it flew into the side of my head. I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't even know if I believe you. Well, I don't know. It might have been hungry. I mean, I've seen a pelican eat a pigeon. Why not a small bat take on a human? You've seen some strange things. Yeah, listen, it's a... Can, does a pel- do, what did you find? Anything you find out? I mean, pelicans definitely have ears. Pelicans have ears. That's uh, the that's the top line. The, the, the more interesting thing is they also, besides fish, eat other birds sometimes. Oh wow! So it's common for a pelican to eat other birds. Pelicans are brutal, man. Pelicans kind of need to chill the fuck out. They're massive though. They're so yeah. big. I mean, when you're that big, you can do whatever you want. I guess that's how they got that big. Yeah, exactly. You know, feeding on their own flying brothers and sisters. <laughs> flying brothers and sisters. <laughs> one one time, I got hit by a deer. Okay. I was not moving. Okay. I was driving, we were, we were like, I was 15 or 16, 
and and we would go smoke weed in the like the the countryside where I grew up. Like is like kind of like a ten minute drive, and you could drive, and there'd be nobody there, and these empty roads, and like so I pulled over, and we were like smoking weed in the car, and it was dark out, and there was a black car, and all of a sudden a deer just ran into the parked car. Oh wow! Yeah, on the road, and I was kind of like, okay. my guy, it might have wanted in on the action. <laughs> <laughs> might just been a really desperate day. <laughs> Maybe it was just it, like it, I'm having a tough day. A long day at work. He just it, wanted to really chill out. Maybe the deer was having post open depression. Uh, potentially. And he was just like, I need a hit. You know. I, I don't know how deeply the open penetrates into the animal kingdom. Yeah. But deers do seem the type to watch golf. I mean, if there was an animal to watch the open, what animal would it be? Well, you'd you'd want to be a bird again, wouldn't you? So you could get above the grandstands and stuff. That's a great answer. Yeah, exactly. Although we now know how dangerous birds are. So <laughs> if you are attending the Open this year and you suddenly see a flock of pelicans, run. Yeah. Run for your life. Yeah. Well, there are a lot of birds right around here. There's a lot of gulls. A lot of seagulls. Yeah. They're so annoying. What where, would be, where I'm sleeping, they're outside my window making a racket. What would be the worst animal to be if you were going to watch the Open? Uh, like a mole. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Like, you're, like you're not really going to see much. Yeah. You're just going to hear the thudding and wonder what's going on. And then you wouldn't want to come up, would you? Well, they might know. They might be able to... Wait, do your moles don't have any eyesight? Uh, they have poor eyesight. Poor eyesight. Yeah, come on, let's not... But let's they can hear. Do them down. We've they already... can hear pretty well. Uh, I don't reckon they probably hear pretty well, yeah. I think yeah. it's mostly just a sense thing with those. They've got a very good sense of smell. Oh, really? They've got a really good nose. I wonder if they could identify the golfers based on their cologne. Because, you know, the pro golfers wear a lot of cologne. They do. And I respect that. I like that. <laughs> What's, what, why do you say that? Well, it's, it's always nice to have a nice smelling person near you, isn't it? Like, you smell absolutely fantastic today. You noticed? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I'll be honest. One of the things... I was uh, hoping for you to return a compliment, but don't worry about it. <laughs> I, I think I went a bit heavy on it this morning as well. You did? Yeah. Well, I can't, I can't smell that either. well, I think. No, it's That's not... My, my senses are... Smell is my least um, notice, noticeable. Mm. Touch and feel. I reckon that's your biggest. I smell. Problem. You smell like food right now. Did you? Yeah. Just eat? Well, I've just smashed the butter bowl over there and yeah. some dirty fries. Yeah. Well, um, no, I, uh, I think, I think, um, when when pro golfers, that's one of those surprising things I noticed when I got near them is that they really smell like cologne. Mm. Well, they've got to spend the money or something, don't they? <laughs> Might as well do it on fine perfumes. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like. Uh, this is this is very entertaining for me. Is it entertaining for you? Oh, I love being there. Yeah, this is great. Oh, we're not caught up in ages, apart from last night where, so, we, where I literally ran into you so like I, a deer on a darkened highway. Wait, that's funny. Yeah. That's, I kind of wanted to tell that story. So it's like I'm in St. Andrews all of one hour, and I'm walking home. I finally seen Stuart for the last time and first time in two and a half years. So we catch up. I take him, you know, back to where he's staying, and uh, he he's like, we're saying good night, and then I walk away. And there's just someone running full speed. And you were wearing golf cleats. Um, yeah, I only run in golf shoes. <laughs> and, and I realized that this person running in golf cleats at midnight in St. Andrews on like an empty field at me, straight at me, mm -hmm. is Peter Finch. And I go, hey, Pete. And you didn't look up and you go, hey. <laughs> I just kept going. I didn't realize. Yeah, you didn't even look up and you kept running. And you were just like, hey. And I was like, Finchy. And then you and then you looked up and you're like, oh hey. And then we talked for like a minute, but you were in a hurry. I mean, it was a little bit more emotional than that. We, <laughs> that sounds so transactional. It was no, we hugs. There was there was a hug. Laughter. Yeah, we it connected. Was, it was a special moment for. And me. we knew we were going to see each other today. It was on the schedule. Yeah. But you were very eager. Where were you going? I was going to bed. I was cold. It was, it was did you, cold. Did like you have to take a shit? Uh, no, no. I I get my movements out of the way early in the day. Are you I, picky I about where you shit? Um. Well, some people are. I choose toilets mostly. I mean, that, I don't. I don't really do anything <laughs> crazier than that. I mean, I, I tend to draw the line. There. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, but like, because some people like won't go in like a public bathroom. Um, I, I don't want to go in American public bathroom. What the hell? What's that about? Uh, have you not know? Like this. This is the one thing. It's always confused me. I don't really understand why it is. Literally every other country, you go to the toilet in public. Hmm. You walk in, the door's there, it closes. There's no gap. <laughs> oh, it's the gap. 
What is that about? The gaps the gap. are so big. You mean that, so there's like a foot on the ground. The, the foot on the ground, but the way the door like closes, for whatever reason, I don't know if like they've been using the same hinges for the last, I don't know, 300 years, but the gap is massive <laughs> in the side of the doors. And yeah. the problem is now I've noticed it, yeah. That worries me. But now I've noticed it when I walk into an American bathroom, I can't help my eyes like just glancing to the side yeah. to try and see if these gaps are that big. Yeah. And every now and again, you see someone looking back at you <laughs> in a moment. In a you moment. Have not. In their weakest have moment. You seen their eyes? Yeah, of course. Because they're looking at the gap thinking, I hope nobody walks past and looks in because those gaps are too big. <laughs> So yeah, you you have like a you 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 want full privacy. You deserve full privacy. Oh, yeah, you're you have a, a right. You're in a moment there where you are completely defenseless. Maybe that's what you know the PIP program for the players, player yeah. impact program. Yeah, yeah, Maybe yeah. it actually stands for a poop in privacy. That's entirely possible. Yeah. And who won that? Was that Tiger? He's a very private. I think paper. I think Phil actually won. No, he claimed to win it. He preempted the uh, draw and he didn't win it. I think it was Tiger. Tiger won. Yeah, it's got to be Tiger. Yeah, Phil announced that he won, and then Tiger ended up winning. Very it's filth, tough. very filth thing to it's Very filth, filthy. Um, so, but but like, I guess, have you ever shat like in the woods? Um, like you know, caveman style, where you're like, where your butt's like right off the ground. You know what I mean? Where you're crouching uh, down. If I have, it's probably a repressed memory. Um, <laughs> I can't. You've never done that? No. I mean, I'm not. I'm not like a clean freak. <laughs> but something like that, I I, I couldn't. I don't think I could mentally cope with that. Really? Yeah. No, I want I want to enjoy that. Interesting. Not the rest of the day. Yeah. It's because it's very rare you're going to get like a a clean exit. Clean ex- I knew you were going to say clean exit. Yeah. yeah. So you know you're going to be searching around for dock leaves and you're going to yeah. pull something poisonous out and you're going to get a, a rashed up bum. And I'm I'm thinking about it now and I, I don't want to be in that situation. Yeah. Describe a good poop as though it were a golf hole. Hmm. You know what? The first and the 18th at St. Andrews are actually probably a good example. <laughs> Relatively wide, easy, and over quite quickly. <laughs> and come Sunday, a lot of cheering. <laughs> <laughs> cheers. Oh, uh, yeah, cheers to that. Yeah. Good. All right, we're going to go to a quick break. We'll be right back. Man, Peter, you're really, you're, do people tell you that you're a great podcast guest? You know what? I don't really do that many podcasts. Really? No, it's, it's something which, I mean, the guys have been figuring out what kind of format that we're going to do over the last, like, literally two years, and we're just not... Who's not the really guys? What are you talking about? Uh, my team. Oh. I'm in the background, I've got Jake, I've got Kieran, and David, the excitement was obviously too much for him. He had to leave. And he's gone for maybe he's gone 18th take, and first he's at taking Andrews. Andrews. Yeah. All the shit thought, God, I'm yeah, going. Just going, going, yeah, got those bowels. He's just thinking one and 18. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, we've been thinking about it for a while, but we've just not got... Just not got around to it yet. I want, when I do a podcast, actually, I want to, I want to want to do it. If that makes sense, mm. I don't just want to do a podcast because it's what you should do. Mm. What are you saying? I'm saying that we need to have a chat about your <laughs> direction. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think. What do you hate to talk about on a podcast? Like, what are you like? Oh god, uh, nothing. Nothing's off limits. You know what I hate to talk about? What do you want? To Sometimes I hate talking about the past. The past. I don't like talking about it. I mean, but it's there. No, it's not. You can't it's avoid in it. your head. Uh, it's ooh, not anywhere. It's also in the books, depending on what you do. Well, yeah, but I mean, it's like, I, I much prefer talking about like concepts and ideas. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that's fun. Yeah. Because we're actually playing a game. This is true. What do you like to talk about? Least like to talk about. Please don't say poop or birds. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's probably... It's most of the first half. If you give me a list before we'd have started this podcast, <laughs> that might have been up there. I mean, it's very rare. But you enjoyed it. You enjoy yeah. it now. It's very rare unless you're going to see your doctor about something quite specific that you want to talk about. Your it's not commonly it's, brought up on pods. No, it's not commonly brought on many places, actually. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's break that. What else isn't brought up commonly? Hit it. First thing that came to your mind, just say it. <laughs> just say it. You don't want to say it. Just say it. I'll edit it out if it's no good. No. Come on. All right. Trust me. Eric, you, you're plumbing depths that you don't want to go to here. Go on, just say it, okay. Pete. No. What do you got? He's not... No, I'm not, I'm not going Are to. Are you going to leave? No, I'm going to. You know what, Eric? This, uh, this, I wasn't prepared. You had something good in there. I wasn't prepared for this. When you sent me the list through, what we're talking about, none of I this didn't send you it. a list of what we're going to talk about. No, you Who didn't. did? No, no. One Someone did. would never do that. No, no one would ever do that. I don't think I'd turn up if that was the case. Yeah. <laughs> what do you... What do you so what, why don't you want to talk about the past? Oh, I just think it's like... 
I just find it's like very like binary. You know what I mean? It's like this happened and this happened and that happened. Like, you know what I mean? Because it's like, I don't know. Like, I don't want to come to St. Andrews and think about the other times I've been here. It's hard to come to St. Andrews and not think about the past and the history though, because that's what this place has more than any other. And that sets the stage for what is going to be happening in the future. Yeah. It gives reference. I see I see that. But at the same time, it's like this is also totally different. Hmm. Like I like almost I, I would if I was to come here and think about old Tom right now, I think he'd be like, What the fuck have you guys done? I don't know. I think he'd be all right with it. You think he'd be okay with yeah, it? Yeah, I think he'd be all right with it. Yeah. I know he had like a pretty beardy and slightly angry face, but I think he was quite. You think it was just a show? Yeah, I think so. I, I think he's think, quite forward thinking. I think he. I don't think he would love the grandstands overshadowing the RNA clubhouse and everything. I mean, they would be blocking out the view from his house. I don't think he'd be able to see anything. Yeah, but he would be in the RNA clubhouse though, wouldn't he? He'd be vibing in there. Yeah, he'd be secretary, wouldn't he? He'd yeah, he'd be, be on sleeping that, there. Yeah, a bottle of red wine. Yeah, on that balcony. You're running into a lot of people this week. What's it like for Peter Finch at? The Open at St. Andrews, the 150th. What's it really like? Um, for me, it's it's amazing because obviously with all the videos that we make and very much the people who watch the videos, it's it's me making something, then watching it, then commenting, commenting on it or interacting with it. But I never meet any of these people. It's quite a weird relationship, really. But when you come to an event like this, those same people who watch the videos can come up to you and say hello and you take pictures and sign stuff. That's great. I mean, it's crazy. If you think about it, like making YouTube videos has got to the point now where people want to come up and take pictures and have autographs. Yeah. That's baffling to me. And I think it's great. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool because you really get, uh, you, you get a sense that it's meaningful. Oh, massively. It, it means something to them. Right. I mean, obviously, when I'm making something, I make stuff I enjoy, and you know, I like producing the videos. But like some of the things people say, and like how much they enjoy the videos, it's strange. It's nice. It's it's unusual. I didn't think I'd be in this position six, seven years ago. Let's put it that way. What did you think you'd be in? What position did you think you'd be in? Uh, <laughs> supine. Um, no, I thought when I was making the videos to begin with, it was just going to be coaching. Right. And that's all I'd be doing. Like if you'd have told me eight years ago, whatever it was when I started, that I would be working with the RNA and doing TV work this week, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have thought that possible. Right. Because why would you? Yeah, that would be outside the realm. There'd be no math to yeah, get you there. Exactly. There'd, there'd be no track record. Not done anything like this before. It's weird. It just comes to you quick, doesn't it? Yeah. Especially at this open as well, like the hundred and fiftieth or the build up to it. Fantastic. Yeah, it's very, um, like, we've been looking forward to it for so long. Mm. Like, it was supposed to happen during COVID, and then they switched them around. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was interesting. Yeah, so it feels like it's been such a long time coming. Yeah. And you do get a bit of a, <laughs> do you get a bit of a ripple effect, though, on yeah. the range? Yeah. When you start signing something. Like, I was leaving there yesterday, and a couple of people came up, said, oh, you know, the videos, blah, 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 signed it, said hello, a few more people come up. Then all of a sudden, I was just surrounded by about 30 to 40 kids, like holding the flags up. And it was quite clear that they'd got a load of autographs. And then whenever somebody else was signing something, they would just go. Right. So I was signing all these things. I could hear like people, oh, what's his name? Who's this? She was like, oh, good luck this week. And I was like, oh, thanks. <laughs> good luck. I'm going to go low. <laughs> yeah, thanks that's very that. funny. That's very funny. But, oh, God. So there's probably about 30 Scottish school, school kids. You could probably get fully dressed up in like you could make your own like pro golfer's outfit, mm. put on some metal spikes and like carry a staff bag and like you that'd be the question is how many autographs could you sign? We should try to make that video. Yeah. You could walk wherever you wanted around it. It'd be yeah. great as well. Yeah. You just get it anyway. What um what do people say to you from afar? Like if they're not gonna come up to say hi, but if they see you walking by, what do they say? They just like shout your name. That's it. Yeah. Peter Finch. Yeah, just like shout your name. I had a guy in the supermarket the other day who <laughs> his like internal like the internal screen between his brain and his his mouth had obviously like corrupted for a moment. <laughs> and he just he stopped me, looked at me and said, That's Peter Finch. <laughs> <laughs> to you. Yeah, so he'd obviously thought it and they just said it and I was like, Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah. 
It yeah. Is. Who are you talking to? Yeah. In the milk aisle at Sainsbury's. That's so funny. That's Peter Finch. That's Peter Finch. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that. I was like, yeah, yeah, it is. That's Peter <laughs> Finch. Yeah, that's kind of a. It's like it's like is he speaking to himself? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> it was with his uh, with his girlfriend, his wife as well. She 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 was laughing. She couldn't stop laughing. Right. Oh, it was funny. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, with I mean, just shout across. Yeah, I love the videos and all that. And then now a few this week, so I saw you on TV. Because mm. what we're doing on the range, it's been sent straight to the big screens in mm. the tented village as well. Oh, cool. Which I didn't actually realize um, until like yesterday. So I've been like blathering on in commentary, just saying all kind of rubbish. Like, oh, really? Yeah. And I now know where it's been. Is it live? Yeah. Well, that's tough. Which is not something I'm used to doing. Yeah. But you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, uh, you don't curse that much. No, no, no. I'm, I'm very, I'm very well behaved when I need to. You have a clean, yeah. clean, you have a clean show. I do. Keep it clean. I do. The quest for the open. Mm. This is, this is, what do people not know about this? Um, I mean, every year I go through open qualifying and film the events leading up to it and then the open qualifying process to see if I make it through to, you guessed it, the open. How did it go this year? It went crap. Really? Yeah. Well, actually, no, it, it was okay until the last three holes and I was on, I was basically on a score which was just out of the playoff eventually. Right. Um, and then I was just pushing on the last few holes, plugged in a bunker, pot bunker, and that was ah. that was that. And then just I've never I've never really experienced this too much, but I just I couldn't believe how deflating it was. Because I like, stepped off that green after a double, which would have meant I'd have to like literally have a hole in one on a par five to make it through. <laughs> it's not gonna, it's not gonna happen. So I just on that tee, I've never I've never ever felt so just like empty. Right. On a golf course, just like oh, it's just, it's literally pointless playing this hole. Mm. I've never felt that before, and it was and because obviously we're filming it and we're putting everything out. It's yeah, kind of stung. What do you mean about filming it and putting it out? It's stung. What do you mean? Well, obviously, if you're filming a process with a, a very much a defined end goal, you know, the whole point of this is to try and improve to get through to the open. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that, there's nothing other than a failure in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Now, obviously, there's improvements and other stuff along the way, but, you know, if you don't, certainly if you don't get through that first stage of qualifying, it's just, it's a bit of a killer, really. Yeah. Because I build it up in my own head as well, obviously. Yeah. Get excited about it. Have you ever pictured yourself winning the Open? No, but I'm not, for a start, I don't, I don't think I'm that positive in my mindset. <laughs> I also like to think I'm Clearly. I'm grounded yeah. in a sense of reality. Okay, um, that it wouldn't be happening. Um, but no, I mean that's not. I mean, getting through to the open is the goal, but it's not. It's not winning it or anything like that. I right. Mean, just just to just to step out onto the tee on an event like that, I wouldn't even have to play it. Just that first tee shot. Right. Just see, you, done. Thanks. Yeah. What is the craziest thing you have pictured yourself doing? <laughs> 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 well, throughout this podcast, quite a lot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> True. Craziest thing I've ever pictured myself doing. I mean, that's a that's a strange question, that Eric. <laughs> You're kind of trying to access my subconscious mind in a in a way that even I don't like to do. <laughs> There's a lot of drawn curtains in my brain, mate. That I don't want to open. <laughs> drawn curtains. What uh, What are you watching? What's What do you any, anything on TV? Netflix, Hulu, uh, Amazon. <laughs> At the moment, the only thing... So I started watching Vikings the other day, which is all right, but it's a bit... It's just a bit like... There's no light relief. Mm. You know what I mean, you just it's want... There's a lot of murder. And yeah, it's like Peaky Blinders. It's like watching that. It's kind of intense. And it's just like, yeah, it's so intense like all the time. Yeah. It just wouldn't happen. At some point, one of those Shelby brothers will turn around and go, what are we doing here? <laughs> When was the last time anyone smiled? <laughs> they just defect. Yeah, it'd be like we don't we don't need to kill that guy. We don't need to do that. <laughs> but we can. We can so we do. Yeah. And it's just like, no, just just don't. Yeah. I mean, yeah, just no need to do that. You yeah. gotta lighten up a bit. Yeah. And then yeah, that's about it really. But I don't really watch much T V to be honest. Really? Yeah. Me neither. I like I like to read more. Really? What are you reading? A Day of the Jackal at the moment. I've not What's read that? that before. It's like, um, it's one of the original like espionage spy thrillers. Mm. 
It's about an assassination attempt on the... It's like John Lacar, who wrote it? Uh, it was... Oh, God, what's his name? I never actually heard of him before I picked up the book. Frederick Forsyth. Frederick Forsyth. Yes, yes, Forsyth. Anyway, it was, so it's, do you it, like it? It's like a spy book? Yeah, it's good, but it's all based in France. What's wrong with that? A lot of French. A lot what? of French names, a lot oh. of French places. What's, which is great. Like that, but, no, it's just like keeping keeping up with everything. Okay. So and it's a lot of like government agencies. Oh, do you have a hard time like like pronouncing them just based keep, on the letters? Just keeping up with everybody. Yeah. Like, what's, what's the names of some of the characters? Oh, the, the jackal. There you go. <laughs> oh, <that's, laughs> I, remember, I remember that. Is that, does that French though? Uh, no, he's actually an English person. There you go. Yeah. Do, you, like, do you identify with him? He's never named. Well, he's a oh. he's a high paid assassin. So you'd be pleased to know. Not really. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You don't identify with him. No, I do not. That's good. Identify with these. Who do you identify with the most in this book? Uh, probably the French president. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> What's their name in the book? Uh, that is Charles de Gaulle. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's like Charles de Gaulle. Charles de Gaulle. That's the name of the airport. Yeah, yeah. CDG. Former president. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Led France back from World War Two. What's your favorite airport in the world? My favorite airport in the world. Oh, probably Manchester coming back. So I know I'm coming home. Oh, that's nice. Uh, definitely not to fly out over the moment though. Jesus, Why? Nice. Oh, so many flight cancellations. Oh, absolutely awful. Awesome. Favorite, probably um, Helsinki was my favorite. Let's go. Yeah, it's like it's interesting. It's the inside of it is like a bit of a like a sauna. It's just all wood. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, it's really nice, but it's all it's all chilled, and like you get out there. And you know what? I'm telling a complete lie because it's not Helsinki. I've never even been to Finland. Reykjavik. <laughs> wow. I take it all back. I've been to Reykjavik. Iceland. I just want to. The Reykjavik apologize. airport actually is really cool. Yeah, you know You're what right. I mean? You know what I mean? It's like a museum. Yeah, it's pretty chilled. And then yeah. you get in there, and there's people saying, "Oh, when's your layover? Two, three hours? Oh, we'll take you out and see some sights." And oh, get really? Back in time. That's great. That was really nice. I didn't do that, obviously. No. Why would you? Why would you? Down, why would yeah. you do that? Because I'm British. I don't want to trust people to do that. <laughs> Sounds like an awful idea. Imagine the stress. <laughs> Go see the Blue Lagoon, this amazing, relaxing place, and you just look at your watch all the time. Well, I thought they were gonna um, take take uh, your kidneys. Oh, well, I wouldn't have gone there. <laughs> Icelandic people are very nice. Sure. They very, very rarely remove the organs of tourists <laughs> without but, prior approval. Yeah, I mean, you would fly in, obviously. And Did you play golf in Iceland? No, it, it was literally just a oh, just layover. Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. were you going? I was going to Florida, I think. Interesting. Did yeah. you take Wow Air? Uh, no, I, Icelandic Air. Oh, okay, got it. Again, very, very nice airline. Yeah. Yeah. But they did, they did give me an upgrade, so, you know. That's nice. Yeah. Why did they do that? Uh, I asked, basically. <laughs> I just, I asked and they said, yeah, all right, why not? And then I asked, <laughs> really? the, I asked on the way back as well, and they said, yeah, we can't, we can't get you to business class, but we can get you on, um, we can get you extra leg room. Uh-huh. Like, Fantastic. So, yeah. so again, flew over from Florida, connected over in there, Reykjavik. Only problem was that to get on the plane coming back to Manchester, it was one of those where the plane's about you know, six miles out on the runway. You've got to get a bus to it, walk up the the steps. And then there was people running late. So they left the door open and I was right next to it. <laughs> and I don't know if you've ever experienced a January Icelandic wind <laughs> whipping around your legs, which you've just been in Florida for two weeks. <laughs> but let me tell you, right. it's chilly. Were you wearing shorts? I was wearing shorts. You're, you're crazy. Yeah, I know. I, didn't, I wasn't expecting... Who wears shorts on a plane? Me. I, I, I think shorts, shorts on a plane is one of the craziest moves I've ever seen. Why? There's no benefit. Is it, is it more freedom? You're more relaxed? You can control your temperature? Either? Relaxed is the state of mind. That doesn't come out of clothing. It oh, very much comes out of clothing. Really? Yeah. Well, if I was sat there in a PVC suit, I wouldn't be relaxed, would I? My <laughs> state of Hang mind on. would Hang be fucked up. I that need one. a visual. PVC suit? What is that? Oh, is like that like Batman? Slippy. Like you, if you went down a dodgy back street in Germany, you might see someone walking around with one. PVC? For that Isn't moment. PVC like, pla- like plastic? Yeah, like plastic. Like really shiny, tight plastic. I, why did you go there? <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> It was the first thing I thought of being massively uncomfortable in public. I think a lot of people can identify with I'm that. I'm just picturing, is that like Prince, Elton John? Uh, Where is that? Who, what, pay me a picture of someone wearing a PVC suit. Yeah, so you go to Amsterdam. Yeah. You go to Red Light District. Okay. You go down a suspicious looking side street. <laughs> speak to a man down there about getting a PVC suit. <laughs> and that's PVC suit dealer? 
Yeah, yeah. Interesting. What color? Oh, red, probably. Red, yeah. Vibrant red as well. A bright red. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, if you're going to wear it, yeah, wear it. Okay. It, um, would you rather play golf naked or in a PVC suit? I would say PVC suit. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you don't, you don't want to be flapping around, do you? No. no. It's a lot. Yeah, I yeah. played golf naked. Yeah, I mean, PVC suit as well would be relatively slippy as well. So you'd probably get a good, good turn. I was thinking it'd be kind of sticky. Uh, it depends what conditions. If you were doing it again in like South Carolina in summer, humid, yeah, you'd be yeah. sweaty, wouldn't you? Yeah, you, like this is more of a north northern European look. Uh, I don't go that far, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you were playing in Swedish uh, winter with that, yeah, I mean, it could it could work. For all I know, they're all doing it up there. Yeah, <laughs> it could be. Yeah, that could be a new. It could be a new golf outerwear brand. I mean, what would you call it? Uh, probably Eric. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and then people would ask where the inspiration was from. Yeah. And I say, I know a guy. You say, oh, there's this podcast that he deleted. Yeah. And you, yeah, you can't find it now, but the inspiration was from It's that. there. Yeah. yeah. Every time I see Eric, I just see big plastic soup. Do you ever, um, like, technically speaking, do you ever, like, is there any big mistake that's ever occurred on the Peter Finch media side? Like, have you ever deleted something or? Um, probably only, I think, last few years i think only once i think we managed to delete a whole video somehow <laughs> and that was how scary is that it, it was it, to be honest it was it was okay it was fine it was more annoying because the course that we'd filmed the video at when we went back to refilm it they just like punched all the greens oh no and they didn't want to they didn't want to film there and then i thought oh, all right we'll, we'll do something else and it was like a, a partnered sponsored video as well right so we just ended up scrambling around but that's the only thing that that's the only thing I can remember. Right. But, you know, little things like that happen all the time, don't they? We had a hard drive fail this year. Ouch. Yeah, we actually had two hard drives fail, and the, each hard drive had the same things on it. Oh, wonderful. We ended up getting some of the footage back. You, What's the most trouble you've ever gotten in while filming? The most trouble? Has you ever gotten kicked off a golf course or something? Uh, No, not really. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm quite a nice guy. I very rarely rub people up the wrong way yeah i very rarely try and do too risque things <laughs> on camera um no not really i mean most of the stuff we do is it's pretty safe right it's not risky we're not mm. vice news right you know we're not taking our golf clubs to battle some colombian drug lords or something yeah you know, we just very much straight down the middle got it apart from the drives apart from <laughs> apart from the golf, golf game. joke oh great <laughs> tune in for that i like that one yeah you keep it what <laughs> I'm never going to use it again. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a throwaway line. Not in a bad way. Oh, thanks for that. <laughs> Not in a bad I mean, it's just sort of like, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I know. I know exactly. It's a vanilla conversation filler. Yeah. yeah it's fine. It's fine. You know, um, there's a, there's, have you heard of the term called vamping? Vamping? Yeah. No. Yeah. So it'd be like if I needed to tie my shoe, you would start vamping, which would mean you would just talk about something and give me time. Oh, right. Yeah, to allow you to complete that task yeah. without saying anything too awkward. So let's do that. Okay. I'll, I'm going to not talk for a minute and you just vamp. Okay. So we are sat here. It's an absolutely beautiful view. What I don't quite realize is just outside the sound of clubhouse here, they've set up the taxi rank and they've done it in the form of crowd control at a prison. This is the one thing in St. Andrews, which I cannot understand is why they can't make things look just a little bit prettier. Maybe sit, look at that out there. I know you don't need to speak because you're vamping or whatever it's called. And then people have left the banks in there. That's not what it's for. It's I don't know what is going on out there. Oh, the aquarium's down there as well. Have you been to St. Andrew's Aquarium? You can just nod. Oh, you have been there. That's interesting. I, have not been I lied, there. I haven't. I'm oh, shaking my head. No, I'm shaking my head. Have you, is it, I've vamped up, is it? I mean, I'm very much observational vamping by the looks of it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I'm just, I'm vamp, yeah, just yeah. looking and saying things. Yeah. yeah. So if you did take off your shoe to sign it, which again seems a very random thing to sign. I didn't sign, no, I didn't tie my shoe. Oh, to tie your shoe? I could shoe. sign my own shoe. Right. You see, that's what I thought was a little bit weird. Like, why yeah. would you be signing your shoe? You thought I was going to take off my shoe to sign it for one minute. I don't know, but you're a bit extra, aren't you? So that's something that you would what do. What does that mean? You're just that little bit, like, out there. A little, yeah. bit, little bit out of the norm. What well, wouldn't surprise you? What, you signing <laughs> your shoe. <laughs> you signing your own shoe and putting it back on. I mean, that would be a slightly weird thing. When were you the most starstruck in your own life? The most starstruck? 
probably like doing events like this and like being up close to kind of Tiger, probably. But that's just obviously, you know, he is literally a megastar. Yeah, and Tiger's the guy. Someone I looked up to. But apart from that, I, I think it's one reason why I'm actually relatively comfortable doing these things. Like I don't, I don't really often get starstruck. Right. It's just, just people, aren't they? Yeah. Everyone's just a person. Tiger's not a person. You know, he, he's like, in my mind, he's a bit, a little bit more than what that. What is he? He's just golfing God, isn't he, really, if you think about it. Yeah. Like, the way the way he's just taken literally a whole sport and just elevated to another level. Yeah. Like, that takes some doing. Yeah, I was talking about this the other day with somebody. Like, he really, um, he, yeah, you're right. He elevated it. He changed golf mm. more than any other individual at a time when, like, you know, celebrity reality shows, internet, like it was all like perfect moment, right? Like mm -hmm. we will never forget this moment. Mm -hmm. um, tabloid, right? Like like the the whole game was just sort of happening. And um, there's probably not that many people in the world who are as famous as Tiger Woods. No. Uh, he is, you would argue, the most famous sportsman, yeah. you'd say. I think you got so. him, you got Michael Jordan. No, the the kind of people who you don't have to actually be interested in that sport to understand who they are and the impact that they had. Well, it's interesting too because like when you think about like th think of another athlete not from golf. Like who's the most famous athlete not from golf? I mean like Roger Federer probably. Fine. Federer. Yeah. What is he wearing? A headband. <laughs> right. Tiger has like a uniform. Like he made his uniform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like red and black. That's Tiger. Exactly. But like other people, it's like they kind of wore different things, you know. And you're like, "Oh, is he at Wimbledon?" No, I don't know. Like, like Nadal, I'm kind of like, eh, I don't know what he's wearing. You know what I mean? Like, like Tiger m made an icon out of himself. Mm. So strange. Yeah, and that, and what he did is, I mean, you know, you've been around enough golf courses to know if someone is out there wearing a red shirt, you automatically think, "Oh, like no, Tiger Red." It's not it, even just red; it's Tiger Red. It's funny that. Like, I, it must just be such a disrespectful thing for a pro golfer to wear black pants and a red polo. Like, it's just off the table. I think it was, was it Patrick Reed did that? Yeah, Reed did that. Last round of a... Yeah. Like, yeah, and everyone kind of pointed it out. Obviously, it was Patrick Reed. Yeah. Why won't it be? Honestly, Patrick Reed, I just got to say it, really nice to me. Nice guy. Every... Like, sweet. Honestly, he was, like, really nice. Yeah, everyone who's met him that I know says the same thing. Yeah. It's weird. Like, I don't know if I'd rather have someone who's like considered to be an asshole who's actually really nice to you or someone who's really mean to you that's considered to be really nice. Because either way, mm -hmm. you're disconnected with reality. I think maybe your your expectations would be, you'd be more hurt if someone who's meant to be really nice was more mean to you. Because you'd go into that thinking, oh, they're going to be nice. And then, huh? Because everyone thinks Phil's super nice. But then you meet him and you're like, he's not that nice. No, I... I think, but once you meet him, you think that. Yeah, I've been around golf long enough to kind of know that, actually. The inside baseball is that he's not a nice guy. Yeah, he's not. I don't, I don't think he's very But he nice. also gives everybody $100 bills. I never got a $100 bill. Yeah, but... Maybe that would change it. I think if you're in a position where you need to give out money for people to like you, that's probably mm. not a great position to be in. Yeah, that's Literally sort of... What is that? Paying for, paying for love. It's, oh. it's kind of like when people pay to juice their social media. Yeah. It's no, not real. It's not real. And it's pointless. Yeah. What's the point? Is it? Yeah, you're just buying Don't bots, aren't you? You're, you're buying, bots. you know, just buying meaningless numbers. Mm. You, know, you don't want to just buy meaningless people, do you? You just want people around you that are good. That, that meaningful. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. So there's four cereals over there. Rice Krispies, Corn Flakes. I'm sorry, there's only two. Mm. But which one are you going to pick? Rice Krispies, Corn Flakes, or there's Cocoa Puffs? I mean, it's, it's Cocoa Pops. Really? Like, why would you even consider? Should we have ones? a Should we have a bowl? Do you want a bowl of cocoa pops? They're pretty crackly. I don't know who's doing sound here, but they'd be absolutely. For a while, we angry. did cookies. We I would make cookies and give them to the guests on the show. Yeah. And um, enough people basically asked me to stop. Yeah, it's it's a bit weird though. Like if you're eating into a microphone, like some people would probably like that in a weird way. Um, but I think most people get uncomfortable. Yeah, it's like. It's not that pleasant. No, not really. Yeah, you don't want to hear it. No, and like, you, it, there's, there's people, seeing people eat, like if you just watch people eat. Yeah. It's very weird. Uh, yeah, have we ever a waiter? Uh, I worked in like, bars and pubs and yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would just be like, 
where you'd catch pictures of people. Like you would just look over at someone and they'd be like, ah, yeah, like, that is disgusting. Soup. It reminds me of a bird, you know, like just eating another bird. Yeah, yeah. That's all. That's all I see now. <laughs> that's all I see whenever anyone eats. I'm so gonna I'm Google. Coming. Can we Google a video of a bird eating another bird? I don't. Is this one of those vamping moments? Pelican eating a pigeon video. You see, that's the kind of thing that'll get you put on a list. Searching for that. Oh, it's an actual news article as well. It's the most British thing ever. You may have seen this still of pictures. <laughs> oh, gross. Making some noises. It, um, it's, what did you say? It's making some noises. Yeah, there, yeah. Going right into the head. It swallows. The, the thing is, you know, because the pelican has the big, like, I guess it's got like the antechamber, like the foyer of its tummy. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> under its mouth. It's got this waiting room. Oh yeah, he took his tummy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so the pelic the, the, the pigeon is in there. Yeah, wondering what has just happened. Realizing that it walked into the wrong house. Yeah. And he's just like fr frantic in his yeah. Oh, let's hear what the girl says. That's terrible. It's terrible. It is terrible. It is terrible. Why is it so terrible? Why do we care? Well, you just seen an animal being eaten alive. What's the, what's the worst thing you've ever seen on a golf course? A golf course. Yeah. Um, like well, what? 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 What really hurts? Probably, probably the worst thing I saw. It was um, I used to work at a golf club down in Shropshire, and it was this. It was two brothers. It was twi what, were they twins. I can't. I can't remember. They were brothers anyway. And one of them hit a golf shot, a snap hook, into a bunker. And the brother had already teed off. Like he went, oh, I'll, I'll go get that ball miles away, miles offline. I went into the bunker, picked the ball up, <laughs> popped his head back out of the bunker, <laughs> just as his brother hit exactly the same golf shot and nailed him right in the middle of the ice. Oh, no. This golf ball. So he's gone down, like a scene from, <laughs> scene from Platoon. Blood everywhere in this bunker. No, it, it, it was horrible, and like we had to get like had air ambulance out. Wait, air ambulance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was in the middle of the golf course, so I couldn't get out to. Him. So air ambulance come in. It was there. It was fine in the end. By the way, this isn't another pigeon situation. Okay, he, he didn't he get survived. He didn't. His brother didn't eat him. His, he survived his <laughs> pelican moment, shall we say? Um, but that oh god, that was horrific. I just think of that all the time. <laughs> Do you really? I couldn't believe Is that because it's well, just, it was just more like. I mean, everyone hits bad shots, but it's hit exactly the same bad shot in exactly the same position, just as your brother pops his head out. Well, and also I'm picturing just like this, this like snap hook left. Like, you know, it's low and you know, it's coming in hot. Oh yeah. That's the thing. Like if it's a little fiddly slice, like, it's probably yeah. just more of a glancing yeah. blow, but snap hook, they travel. Like, yeah. That thing's coming around. Exactly. Like, yeah. If you want to do some serious damage. Yeah. And again, just a warner on this podcast. Please don't snap up your ball at people. Well, you know what? Actually, that is one of the things I would... Of, of, there's a lot of fates that I would like to avoid. Mm. And one of them is I just... I don't want to die being hit by a golf ball. As much as I joke that it would be kind of peaceful and, like, appropriate, mm. I really I really also feel like it might, it might, like, undermine a lot of what I stand for and believe in. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I think... Uh, I think it would really like. <laughs> but what what a way to go! What a way to go it would be. Like you, you know say, I mean? like, if, unless you saw it coming, <laughs> like it would be Literally? a peaceful way. Yeah. Like, but you only have one second or like four seconds, maybe. Yeah. Like, if you're just wondering, like, and again, a warning, please, everyone, shout four if your ball is heading towards somebody. Yeah. Um. Like, yeah, what would be a fine way to go? You think so? Yeah. I mean, I mean, there's not many good ways to go, is there? Let's face it. I think plane crash would be pretty good. Mm. You see, I think that, and I would like to think at points that I would be brave enough to be looking out the window and seeing my doom head towards me. Yeah. But I... You can do it three minutes. I mean, yeah, if it's a long descent. Three minutes would be a lot for you. Yeah. What's like, the ideal time? In a plane crash. No, like for you, like what you, you, you from Pete realizing he's going to die to dying. What's your ideal like time span there? What are you looking for? I think, I think you got to go... Like really quick, thirty seconds. Yeah, so we're talking seconds or really long. Oh, like imagine like a day. You got 20, a day, twenty four hours. You know you're gonna oh. go twenty four hours. That I mean that's actually kind of ideal. Mm. 
Because a years, I think, would be tough. I wouldn't want to know. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think a day probably maximum. But if you think about it, I mean, bucket list is a term that's thrown around a lot in golf. It is. What's on your bucket list? Uh, well, number one, not to die in a plane crash. <laughs> that can't be on your bucket list. <laughs> number two, your no. bucket list can't be like wishes around the circumstances well, no, the, of your these, own death. These have actually just been added. Number two, never put myself in a situation <laughs> where someone says to you, "You have twenty four hours to live." <laughs> Because that would probably mean I've gone down some really <laughs> questionable decisions. That's like a mobster in thing. In my life, yeah. yeah that, mean, that means someone's going to kill you. Yeah. In 24 hours. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a very pointed statement, isn't it? But what if you, you, at least again, your day. Well, if you were in India and you ate something bad and they were like, you've got 24 hours to live. Again. Again, that what, sucks, though. I, I would contact TripAdvisor, first of all, to <laughs> question the review. <laughs> Of that particular restaurant, that wasn't <laughs> yeah. mentioned, yeah. was it? Yeah, this Good was point. a fantastic chicken tikka masala. Yeah, didn't read the small print. Last one of your life. Yeah, it will literally be your last meal. Yeah, yeah, that would kill. Um, bucket list. I mean, I gotta be completely honest. I don't want. I don't want to like seem like I'm avoiding the question here. I've never made one. Really, and I don't really see. I don't really see the point to be mm. honest. Like, because if, if I went to a bucket list, I'd just fill it with stuff that I'm supposed to fill it with. Like what? Oh, yeah, you, know, you need to do like a parachute jump. I don't want to do a parachute jump. I mean, it's I your just, list. Yeah, but like, I'm, I'm just doing like this. This is great for me. This is amazing. What Being we're at the right old here. course, working, doing a podcast. Being here, chatting, old course. Well, that's not like you've done it before. Yeah, so I'm just doing stuff I like to do all the time. Like, bucket what? list is something that you've never done that you want to do before you die. And it doesn't need to be a list. It can just be kind of like a general thing. Like, I have a couple on my list. I'm surprised you don't have anything. Give me, give me one. I want to play the old course in reverse. Okay. I want to go to Thailand with Stuart. I'd like to go to Thailand with Stuart, actually. That'd be a great trip. You can put trip. that on your list. That would be a great trip. So does that, does that mean there are three of us going? Uh, yeah, put me down. I'm Honestly, there. that'd be fun. Yeah, mate, I'm there. Honestly, I think, I, I think that's actually a really good idea. I've, I've never been to Thailand before. I've spent very little time in Asia. I mean, Thailand's to, amazing. It's go, the golf capital of Asia. Yeah. Go to Japan. Yeah, that was something I really wanted to do. I'd and then what? You took it maybe off. Maybe put it in the bucket. But I say that was the only thing in the bucket. No, no, the bucket is the, the, things don't go in the bucket. The bucket is you dying. Oh, when you kick the bucket, you want to have these things completed. Oh, right, okay. So the bucket isn't a holder oh. for the ideas. Sorry, yeah, I thought the bucket was the idea no. holder. Once no. the bucket was empty. No, it's the bucket list, meaning that when you die, uh. these are the things you want to have done completed. I say four. So this is probably showing how much thought I've given to the bucket list. I well, didn't even think about the I think grammatical structure of the whole One of the things that's coming out of this podcast is I think maybe just maybe taking away some of the unknowns around, you know, <laughs> a bucket list for you. Yeah, and I'm I'm thankful for that. Yeah. Like, you know what? I'm not sure I'm going to change my mind there. Really? I just like to. What do? How about this? Let me ask you a different question. What do you want to do before you die? Um, live a long time. <laughs> 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 That'd be ideal. No, honestly, man, I don't. It, it's something really? which I'm not. Nothing, huh? It's just. What do you really want to do? How about that? Come on, man. Like, Is there anything you really want to do? Okay. Do, do you want to, Do you want to know how my day works and how I, I live my life? Um, I got okay. up. I got up this morning. That's a win. Okay. Big win. Happy about that. Right. I went to the bathroom. We were talking about our movements. Yeah. Successful. Good. Had a really good shower. And then I checked my diary. You're a morning shower guy. Yeah. Oh, oh. oh absolutely. Interesting. I can't leave the house without a shower. Really? And then it's like... I can't go to bed without showering. Oh, really? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm just the one showered. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to get into that or no? Um, my theory is that you got all the dirt from the day on you. Why carry it into the bed? Hmm. And it's relaxing. Yeah, but I think I'm into a routine now. Having a shower in the morning means I'm ready for the day. Mm. Like if I have a shower in the evening and then go to bed, like what am I getting clean for? The you yourself, the bed. Yeah, but I know I'm. And then dirty. you actually I know stay I'm dirty. <laughs> <laughs> so all yeah. I'm, all I'm doing. I, is, I, so I mean, getting, I know you know you're dirty. That's why you would shower. Yeah, but if I'm getting a shower and then getting into a bed, it's kind of like it's like filling up a car and then parking it in the garage. Then, What's the point of that? When it's ready to go in the morning. Like buying an ice cream and leaving it out. Come on. Well, no, because the ice cream melts. The shower does. You clean doesn't melt. You stay clean. No, but you don't stay clean. If you, you think about gonna, it, you got to sweat in. at night as well. So then you just get up in the morning and go for a shower again. You sweat at I night. I'm actually saving the environment just by having one shower a day. I, I do want to point out that I've had like literally two showers a day oh. since I've been here because oh. it was hot. So when was your second shower? Um, I've had a shower like mid-afternoon on, maybe not yesterday, so like Sunday, Monday. Yeah. Because it was roasting. 
Yeah. It was sticky. And I, I live like a really, really good life. I'm happy. Opportunities come up. I say, yeah, do things. Awesome. Great. I know. Why, why, would I, why would I need to put a list together of things that I want to do when... But what if, what, what if I invited you to? What, 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 what could I invite you to that you'd be like, yes? Well, no, like stuff like that. Like this, let's say a Thailand trip with Chu. Yeah. Opportunity comes up. How amazing would that be? Yeah. But I'm not planning There's no that. Like, golf when, course you really want to play? When, when are, whenever are the best things in life planned? The best things in life are Very often. Many times. Really? Yeah, of course they are. It's the, it's the spontaneous nights out, the spontaneous meetings of people, the trips that you take. Like, I'm not, like, rough, like, scheduling a trip with a list of things you got to do. That's not fun. Mm. You're just, like, ticking off a list. I don't know if you can come to Thailand with me and still. So. Oh, no, you can do the organizing. <laughs> and I'll just stare around in wonder at all the things that... Yeah, I think you need mind. to pull your weight, though. I will buy the food. You will? Yeah, it's cheap over there, isn't it? It's cheap over there. I knew you would. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> All right, well, that'll be fun. What should we call it? The t- <laughs> titillating Thailand trip. The TTT, the triple T. Yeah. Get a tattoo as before, after we've gone. Let's get it like that. T's everywhere. Yeah, lightning bolt with three T's in it. Mm, yeah. yeah. Oh, I quite like that, actually. And then if you stick those T's in like a... Stick those T's in, it'd be like almost like a bit like of a, a triangle star shape. Oh, like the Isle of Man kind of thing? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like the three legs? Yeah, yeah. I like it. Any questions for me before we end the podcast? Um, Very good. Thank you for joining. No. Any, anything else? No. Yeah, anything? No, That's no, good. No, it's, no, good I just, it's just really good seeing you. You too. Yeah. It's fun to be able to just talk, even though people are listening. Yeah, but it's a nice, this is a nice conversation. You set the set the scene very well. It's relaxing. Yeah, it's very relaxing. The last thing you want to be uncomfortable at times. Too relaxing. Oh, not relaxing enough. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, we're all relaxing, and then you're like, where'd you poo? <laughs> just like you just slip it in there. <laughs> Excuse me. Slip it out there. Yeah, slip it out there. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, yeah. No. Thanks. Well, thanks for coming on, and uh, you know, now we can continue to talk off the without the microphones. If you'd like, uh, that option is out there for you. I would like just to sit in silence. <laughs> I'll talk. I would just like to. Hold, I would like to hold eye contact for an inappropriate yeah. long amount of time. What's the longest? Do you win those or do you lose those? Um, I would win those. I think. Really? Yeah, because I think I'd probably move past the awkward stage quite quickly. So yeah, I'm, I'm like, I'm very right intense. Now. I'm looking at you right now. I'm yeah. awkward. Yeah, I'm it's good. Look I don't want to do it. Yeah, let's just. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. I appreciate right. it.